Hello and welcome to Core Finance and my guest today is David Buick, the Senior Markets Commentator at Panmure Gordon. David, welcome back Good to the program. Good morning to Colin. Um, so uh, we've got a few things to talk about on the program this morning but let's start with that UK inflation data. What's yes, the story? No, no surprises there, 3% as expected up from 2.9% last month. <clears throat> Our economist Simon French from Panmures believes that next month is the Senate 3.1 percent, which will probably coincide with Mark Carney having persuaded the other uh, less enthusiastic members of the MPC that perhaps it would be a good idea to symbolically put rates up another quarter percent to a half percent, which is the rate it was, of course, before the uh, European referendum uh, back on the 23rd of June 2016. This, I think, is for two reasons. One, obviously, inflation is a concern. Um, and not only have we got inflation at 3%, but, as I understand it, wage inflation has been around 3% for the last three months, which is as bold as it's been for some time, even if it's only on an annualised basis, around 2.4%. Yeah, so it's all starting to feed through. Well, it's yeah. starting to feed through, but there is a question of don't throw the baby out with the bathwater. So if you put rates up any more than, as I say, symbolically the mandatory quarter percent, which I think is, I won't say it's done and dusted, but it seems likely, that we are likely to have a period of uncertainty over Brexit and the horrendous procrastination beautifully orchestrated by the European Union, who seem to have no appetite to want to negotiate with our people at all, and our people not really knowing what they really want to do, uh, does throw the market into... Uh, disarray to the degree that there's nothing worse. Uh, you can deal with bad news and you can deal with good news, but uncertainty no one can deal with. And this is what we're going to get likelihood in spades. So I think for the bank to put it up any more than that, despite the fact that they are very, very concerned about credit card borrowing and also about personal loans and particularly car loans, which have absolutely rocketed. Personal borrowing has gone up at an average of 10% each year for the last five years. And this is not good news, and I think this is something, whether, of course, a credit card company would charge the best part of 20%, a quarter percent makes any difference, but at least it sends out the right sort of thing. We think it'll top out. We think why? Because we think um, uh, basically raw materials charges have, will flatline. Um, we're also seeing these things are always done months in arrears. Yeah. And now, because we've had the adjustment in the pound, and the pound having gone up from 225, uh, sorry, I beg your pardon, one twenty-five to one thirty-two. That is a significant move. It is, and therefore uh, we expect it to be nearer two percent by July of next year than three percent. Well, they heard it here first. Um, so, uh, uh, another thing that the uh, that hit the news this morning: uh, Trade Secretary Greg Clark. Uh, going to tighten those rules on mergers and acquisitions? Well, we've had a, a, a few unfortunate incidents and one or two that could have gone wrong. Um, first and foremost, we cast our mind back four or five years to the time when Kraft Foods decided they'd like to buy Cadbury Schweppes, supposedly in good faith, and said all jobs are safe. And ink was hardly dry on the uh, deal when several hundred people lost their jobs in places like York and Derby and elsewhere. Well, and then, of course, there was the possibility of Pfizer buying AstraZeneca, and we've also had, you know, um, other companies under the ruler, is that Greg Clark, because there is such a lot of what I call Far East money, particularly Chinese money, Malayan money, and Indian money, there is a question now, of course, security. And if Greg Clark is imposing tougher rules for takeover for security reasons, and security reasons only, then I'm for it, and I'm up for it. Now, the qualification now is going to be, um, or was in the past, 70 million turnover, and somebody wanted a 25% stake, the government had the right to intervene. Now it's only going to be a million pounds, which is just, again, mandatory. Yeah. And the government is going to have the drains up on anything over that with the 25% ceiling. And I understand that, but we don't want to become like Germany and France, because neither of them have allowed an overseas predator to come in and buy a German or French company, not since the old king died. And I think that is extremely bad news because I'm a free enterprise person and I like to see charge what the traffic will bear. And if it's good for the business, it's good for shareholders and it's good for employment. 
it should happen. I dislike protectionism enormously, unless it's for security reasons. If it's for security reasons, then I think it's a very good thing. Yeah, and uh, the logic behind the, that protectionist stance may seem very good in the short term, but in the long term it's a disaster. Well, terrible. Uh, you, you end up with companies that are inefficient and unproductive hanging on. And not global. Big, big, and and you know, there could have been twice as many people employed by better companies. It's, yeah, exactly, uh, but I think providing he makes that very clear, yeah. that the Conservative Party is going more to win votes, I think, to the, to the centre ground, which where I don't think the, the situation is at the moment, yeah. that if you are a believer in the free enterprise and the capitalist system, anything of this nature in form of legislation, unless it's purely stacked for security purposes, is a nonsense. Oh. Uh, talking of mergers and, uh, and, and, and alliances, uh, we've got uh, Bombardier and uh, Airbus uh, getting into some sort of partnership. T tell me more about well, that. Bombardier, sorry, Bombardier. Bombardier well, Bombardier, it's, it's yeah. French-Canadian, it'll do fine. <laughs> um, I think you have to go back, really, to two or three weeks ago when the um, Department of Justice uh, and the U.S. regulators told uh, Bombardier for their C-series uh, jet they were going to charge a total of two lots of tariffs, upping the tariff by 300 percent, based on the fact that they believed that the, they were putting Boeing at an unfair disadvantage. I've never heard such nonsense in all my life because the C-series jet made by Bombardier bears no resemblance to anything that Boeing makes. But again, you're looking again at protectionism. So. Airbus, to their total credit, despite the fact we've got Brexit and everything else, have said, look, we'll take 50.1% of this business. And uh, when I say this business, I mean the project. I don't mean Bombardier as a company. No. And that means that we should, according to Greg Clark, again, uh, the Secretary of State for Trade and Industry, or BC, BSI as they call it, um, says that that should get us out of that problem with the uh, tariff of 300%. It's also making the business more international and more to the point, Colin, is protecting the three to 4,000 jobs in Derby and other parts of the United Kingdom and another 1,000 jobs in Northern Ireland where Bombardier is also pretty strong. So all in all, I think that's a very good piece of, piece of news. Indeed, and, uh, and more power to Airbus given all the uncertainties Absolutely. that are going on. Absolutely. Uh, uh, the, they've got a big operation down in Bristol where we make yeah. wings and, you know, they've been threatening noises down there saying, mm, Brexit may not mean that we can support this. But it looks like people are having a more and more of a sensible view. And I get the impression now that it's business that's going to call the shots over Brexit much more than silly politicians who are, you know, absolutely obsessed with uh, detail and uh, with laws and the rest of it, whereas we need a good spirit between business folk either side of the channel to come out of this with a sensible deal. Oh, and certainly Airbus has shot a, put a shot across Mr Juncker's bow with that. <laughs> a, a, a couple of uh, profits uh, stories this morning. We've got Pearson uh, and, and, and Merlin. Well, Pearson I find a fascinating company because gone are the days um, when it owned Chatelet Tour and Lazard Brothers and Madame Tussaud and Penguin Books and various other things. And when Marjorie Scardino, or I should say Lady Scardino, was received, she got out of most of those assets with the possible exception of Penguin Books, which she's got under the name of Random House, mm -hmm. and focused the business in the direction of education, particularly in the United States. It sounded like a good idea at the time, but it's been a disaster area in terms of share price. The share price is down from exact figures of about £1,400 three years ago, sorry, 1400 pence three years ago, down to about 630 pence today, which is a serious knock. Yeah. Um, and John Fallon has been the CEO for the last three years, and he must be embarrassed to the degree of the number of profits warnings they've put up. Well. Their uh, sales in the course of the last nine months have been quite good in comparison to what many thought there was going to be a drop in profits, potentially as much as 19%. In point of fact, saw sales up by 4% in the last nine months, and the market liked it. And I'm pleased for them, and the shares rallied by 6.6% this morning. Conversely, <laughs> Merlin Entertainment, which is a company that a lot of people have enjoyed and seen the share price go from, I think it's four years ago when they went public, from... 300p and they've seen it up as high as about 575 pence and it's been down because we had the disaster in Alton Towers 
Uh, your uh, viewers may want to recollect that not only they own Alton Towers, they own Thorpe Park, they own Legoland, the, the, the Eye, uh, Madame Tussauds, and a number of other things on a global basis. And obviously, because it's very much a tourist attraction, the rest of it, they've got their foreign exchange looking at it horribly wrong. And even though the figures themselves, before taking into account foreign exchange, didn't actually look too bad, it does look as if the company was grossly overvalued. And I'm afraid, as we know these days, uh, market makers vent their spleen very easily, and they took these shares down by 19%. Conversely, even shortly after that, we did see one or two uh, research houses of respect, very respected, saying, we recommend these shares as a buy. So we'll see what happens. Yeah. They've had, obviously had a big clear out. This, uh, Nick Farmy is a, a very, very talented businessman. He's run this business now for many, many years. And I would have thought Merlin Entertainment was far from dead in the water. Uh, but 20% uh, or no, no, near 20%. Wow. That, that's a big move. That's right. Uh, and will, we want to know a bit more why. I, I would think it'll unnerve a few of the longer term investors who'll want to. So it might be a day or two before it stabilises. But um, Exactly. But it's interesting that the, uh, the, 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 the brokers are already beginning to write some more positive notes on it. Well, they've taken into account all in all what their portfolio is and what the pro prospects are. And, you know, even in the United Kingdom, if you look at it alone, one of the great things we are now, because the pound is a very attractive place to come for tourists. And you would, you would have expected, uh, you know, some pretty good revenues. You've seen them. And it's a pity that the Treasury operation seems, on the face of it, but I say we need more meat on the bone, to have got the foreign exchange horribly wrong. Well, thank you very much. Indeed. Great pleasure, Colin.